Hello there, how are you all doing? Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon to all of you. It is a genuine pleasure to be here with all of you. Let us begin, press the play button. Yeah, yeah. We are commencing our ninth class of the course, which is part of this intensive biblical finance course. Please inform me and type in the chat your location of origin and current place of residence. Yeah, yeah, contact me in the chat. Tell me everything. What is your current location? What is your place of origin? Listen, the topic for today will provide guidance on how to steer clear of making errors when investing. Look, so that those mistakes that I'm going to tell you don't deceive you and don't prevent you from having your finances under control. If you want to have your finances under control, make some extra cash and start investing to make God's dreams come true in my life, hit me up in the chat. I have a desire. Yes, yes, we are only just getting started. Come on, come on, come on, let's go. Look, the concept today is to keep preparing to understand how to earn more, multiply your seeds, and invest better in the right and lasting way for long-term growth. We are in the initial stage of this event, which is a warm-up, a prelude to the subsequent stage, which is extremely special and will commence on the upcoming Thursday. Are the classes in this initial stage held on a daily basis at two different times? Is that correct? However, today the class we usually have in the evening, correct? We will explore it and have it prepared by the afternoon, correct? It is going to be at a different time. We possess a class scheduled at a different time. Therefore, be attentive to the WhatsApp group of the Biblical Finance Intensive. In the practical classes of the second stage, only those who register for free will have the ability to access them. They will not be available on YouTube. These classes will not be open on social media. If you are already in one of the WhatsApp groups for the course, it is because you're already enrolled for the second stage. Got it? So, and if you are not in the WhatsApp group, how can you go about joining? You will need to access the link that is located down below this video, okay? Starting from there, all you have to do is be part of a group. So if you're already in a group, there's no need to join another group, okay? Well, however, ensure that you are in a group so that you can receive all the information about the event. Yeah, yeah, make certain of it. Look, the seven most special classes will be for the second stage, which will be the practical stage. Remember that in this stage, I'm gonna give you support materials with exercises to practice. Additionally, we will have an exclusive Facebook community for you to post your workouts. And my team and I will accompany you. And all of this is going to be provided free of charge for those who signed up for the event and are here super committed with me. Okay? Where are the super committed, super committed to changing their financial lives? Where are they? Really? Let's remember that the whole point of this 100% free course is to bring you content so that you can be obedient to God in your finances and thus have your finances under control, make extra money and invest to fulfill God's dreams in your life. And it does not matter if you have debts today or not, you will see how it is possible. It is possible to get out of all of them. However, to achieve that, you must commit and take the first step. Okay. Do you understand? Got it? How did the case of my student, my mentee, Edelson, go? He believed that one of the bad investments that I'm going to tell you about here today was actually a good investment. That is correct, however. He realized that it was a bad investment. Look, please take a look at the case of Edelson for further insight. I want to give you guys my testimony. I'm really grateful, so happy to have come across through social media this program that brings us a unique advantage to our financial life. And I learned, I gained a wealth of knowledge from all of you during this short time that we have been enrolled in the course. We've already learned how to make investments, something I didn't know. I used to think that savings was the best place, but it really isn't. I had no knowledge that we were not obligated to make payments for these bank fees that we have been paying all along. As of today, I am fully aware that we live in an era where we have various applications digital banks, and brokers at our disposal, we acquire knowledge of our capabilities, expressing gratitude to God. I offer my admiration to God for the existence of Dr. Talia from Rodrigo, this incredible team. 
and I have been acquiring a wealth of knowledge from you all, and I am aware that I will continue to learn, because it has been a transformative experience, a pivotal moment in my financial life. I am already successfully managing to make ends meet. I am already successfully managing to make an investment. Take action, because here you have the means to change your financial life. And that is why I want to leave this testimony. Look, Edelson believed that investing in savings was the best option, but he didn't anticipate that by putting his money in a savings account, he was actually losing purchasing power and diminishing the value of his savings over time. Instead of multiplying the money, he was actually decreasing it. And I will inform you about it in a short period of time. Let's keep going and we'll understand why, okay? In yesterday's class, I explained to you that in the parable of the gold coins, which is the word of the talents, the dumb and unfaithful servant was scared. The manager mentioned that he should have handed over his money to the bankers instead of burying it and carrying out actions driven by fear as per his regretful realization. And I never become fatigued with reiterating because there are consistently individuals in the chat who inquire of me, but ultimately, how does one go about extricating themselves from a loan? It is a very common question. Unfortunately, a lot of individuals still do not understand it. They believe it's a magic trick. Only a single piece of advice is sufficient and it will enable you to escape from the loan. But what I've been repeating in all these nine classes so far is that if you want to have the kind of transformation like my student Edelson and everyone else has had, Look, you need to start having a real metanoia. What is a metanoia? It's a fundamental shift in thinking or character and commit to your transformation. You need to empower yourself because what God is going to give you is in accordance with your ability. Yes, always according to your ability. It's in the word, it's in the Bible. You also have to commit to watching all the classes in this course because it's a sequence where you'll be able to put together the puzzle that will be the first step in your transformation. Okay, let's move forward. Another instance, in case you believe you do not possess sufficient time to view the classes, examine your priorities, all right? Is it possible that the financial future of your family and obedience to God in that area of life is not a priority for you? Please take a moment to look at your Bible and remember the importance of Proverbs 4.23. Team, put in the chat now Proverbs 4.23, which goes like this. Be careful with what you think, because your life is guided by your thoughts. In your financial life, it is your thoughts that generate your actions, attitudes, actions, and results. Your thoughts shape your actions, attitudes, and ultimately your outcomes. The money you have in your account today has come just from that. And I've always repeated it so that you pay attention. It's really important that you know this, that you take this into account, that your thoughts generate your actions, which generate your results, you know? Just like we talked about in yesterday's class, then start by committing to attend all the classes, okay? Where are the super committed ones? He is extremely committed. She is extremely committed. It is wonderful that you are here with me today. I am grateful for your presence. In these classes, you'll learn how to improve your financial life and live the promises that God has for your life. Do you want to live the promise that God has for your life? Yeah? Hit me up in the chat right now. Yeah, I'm down. Yeah, I'm down. It's an important thing you got to do. And in order to make dreams come true, you need to know how to manage your finances. You need to have your finances under control, okay? Having financial peace. Who wants to have financial peace? You want? Yeah? I always state that there are three types of individuals. A group of individuals who are the curious ones. Who are the curious ones? They are the individuals who simply come by to take a look at the class. Sometimes even complain because they desire it to be very easy. They desire the magic pill, but they do not commit and do not change their financial lives. The dedicated individuals are the ones who consistently attend the majority of the classes, but fail to apply the knowledge and simply retain it for their own benefit. But who are the individuals who are truly going to transform their financial situation? 
They are incredibly committed. What was the final outcome of my mentee Edelson's case? He diligently attended all the classes and meticulously followed every step of the financial route. I'm going to talk about the financial paths in the Christian week of I Control My Finances, which I teach you in the second stage of this course. And he implemented what he learned and undoubtedly disseminated that knowledge with a larger number of individuals. I believe in this. And if you are committed, super committed, pay attention, because this afternoon I am definitely going to talk about where to invest in our class 10. Yes, and that is the question I receive asked the most. Doc, where can I invest my money? What is the best investment? But if you miss out on the content of this class, you will not be able to make the most of this awesome content. And yesterday, I also talked to them a little about passive income, which is the income generated by your money trees. I explained to you the foundation of everything that is the law of sowing. Do you remember? It is important that we sow both spiritual and natural seeds. Take a look at how classes are structured in a sequential manner. And natural seeds produce our money tree. And with this, I will demonstrate to you that you can possess your own money tree. So let us commence. Today, my objective is to deconstruct in your mind certain concepts that you have previously held to be true and may still consider to be a sound investment. When you acquire knowledge of what is not good, it is much easier, yeah, and simpler as well, to make more informed and improved decisions. And that is what I want for you because you have already learned the principle. Therefore, you already have a solid foundation. During your financial transformation, it is not beneficial to only acquire a limited number of small tips and tricks. The most ideal investment is this one at this very moment due to the cyclical nature of the market. The market experiences daily fluctuations, but the foundation, the principles of bad investments remain unaltered. Does that concept make sense to you? Yes. Right in the chat. It's content. Yeah, yeah. Right. I have. Yes. Okay. So let's proceed. And as I mentioned, I have a preference for teaching you how to fish rather than giving you the fish. Why? I will not be present here anymore, and it is with those seeds of knowledge that you have the ability to plant numerous money trees. The biblical principle of sowing is the foundation for investments. If you have not seen last night's class, after watching this class, go here to my channel, because the previous classes, including class 8, are still up, but only until this weekend. Make sure to catch up before they're gone. It is crucial that you pay attention to this. Now, I will explain to you about seven financial products that appear to be investments, but they are actually not. All right. Therefore, kindly make a note. Firstly, I will begin with the initial option, which is highly favored and preferred by the banks. And the individuals who are most attracted to it are the people who, if they do not have a bill or payment commitment, never save any amount of money which is the title given to the process of capitalization. Look, the capitalized title is a credit title that you obtain for a specific period of time from banks with the objective of saving money and not investing, as well as avoiding participation in prize draws on multiple occasions. They are marketed as investments, it is true, but this is nothing more than a myth because within the amount paid each month, only a portion goes towards profitability while another large portion is allocated to administrative expenses. And in many countries, there is this type of banking product available for consumers. In fact, the capitalization title is a banking product that is commonly sold as part of a bundled sale to facilitate the acquisition of other products and services. Pay attention to this. It's a bundled sale. Plus, after people buy, there's a grace period that prevents even their redemption. And if you remove it earlier, you lose a substantial portion of what was paid. That is unfortunate. And these titles have such a low, low profit that it almost reaches zero. So ultimately, you are losing money because on numerous occasions, you do not even manage to reach the required adjustment to compensate for inflation. I can assure you that they are deceiving you. Okay, they're similar to the lottery, like a game of chance. 
Individuals are attracted to the raffle that frequently takes place. And trust me, it is mentioned in the Bible. The Bible warns us against easy money in Proverbs 13, 11. Team, put the chat on, Proverbs 13, 11. It is what it is. The goods that are easily earned decrease, but the one who gathers through hard work will experience an increase in their possessions and overall wealth. Okay, to sow, the farmer needs seeds and fertile soil so that he can harvest the multiplication of his seeds. Yes or no? Yeah, everything you sow, you reap, multiply. These are the consequences of your actions. And this must be done wisely. And that is exactly what does not happen when you purchase a capitalization title. So also check your Bible. In Galatians 6, 7, the team adds in the Sheki another verse. Galatians 6, 7, which says this. Do not play around. God cannot be fooled because whatever a man sows, he will also reap in return for his actions and choices in life. How tasty, yes or no, yes? The Bible is truly abundant, isn't it? So let's proceed to the two. The two. Gold, yes, with regards to gold. Account in gold, gold account, or even gold notebook, as it is sometimes referred to by certain individuals. What is she referred to as by many? Yeah, sorry. It is the most popular investment in America. The compensation for gold is determined by a rule that varies based on the level of the underlying interest rate of the domestic economy. Another strong characteristic of gold is that there are specific dates to withdraw the invested in puertos with the income from the previous month in many countries, the so-called gold anniversary. So, if the rescue is carried out before that, the earnings will be lost and unable to be recovered. So, be attentive to the golden accounts that possess the so-called golden anniversary celebration. What managers typically do not mention is that gold frequently loses profitability, even in numerous cases of inflationary pressures. And nowadays, it's clear the loss in terms of inflation in most countries. To clarify, when you make an investment in that particular product, you are effectively experiencing a gradual erosion of your purchasing power as time goes on. And that's really bad. You got to pay attention to this just so you get an idea. Look, in my current location, the price index that modifies rents increased significantly more than the index that modifies the gold account. And based on some studies I have conducted, a similar phenomenon occurs in the majority of countries in America. That means that if you had left your rental money in a gold account, in a year you would have a deficit of more than 20% of the value required in order to be able to pay the same rent. How terrible! Yet another instance of the erosion of buying power. Envision wanting to purchase a television for $300. Consequently, you decide against it. If you do not buy it today and put the money in your savings account, what is going to happen? Yes? Can I assure you that in one year, you will not be able to purchase the same TV? Well, you have lost purchasing power with the money in savings, and maybe you will have to pay approximately 20% more to make this same purchase. Due to what? Because of inflation. Inflation is something of great significance to keep in mind when you are making an investment. You can speak, but doctor, is gold a secure investment? No, it's a big mistake. The gold accounts throughout the history of many nations have already been confiscated by certain governments from various countries, correct? Look at Brazil, Argentina, and many other attempts in other countries. Pay attention to this. You have the ability to express it, but savings accounts do not impose fees or taxes. Therefore, is it windier or is it not windier? Some individuals may inquire, no, and this is not accurate, because despite the fact that ultimately there are no charges or taxes imposed, the funds in your savings account will generate significantly less returns compared to other investments, including safer options such as treasury bonds and public funds. And so, look, it's really important for you to have one thing in mind. If paying taxes on investments isn't bad, if it has a good rate of return, you know what I mean? Is paying taxes a good thing? Yes. 
This shows that you have income. It's better to pay, go, and earn more. You understand one thing more. You comprehend that gold is not the optimal investment you ought to make. I want to break that down in your mind at this present time. Keep in mind that knowledge is what will provide you with improved choices, but also understand that it is crucial to have a reservation. Yeah, now look, it is not that the gold account is bad. You are not going to have money for an emergency fund. Yes, it's important that you have one. And it doesn't matter which country you live in today, you gotta have a safety net. I educate my students on accounts and their locations for storing emergency funds in numerous countries. I possess a portfolio of investments where I communicate with my mentees, providing guidance, support, and valuable insights. Deposit your funds into this account as a safety net. Additionally, please remember that the money you set aside functions as a form of safeguard in different circumstances encompassing situations that may potentially result in indebtedness. The safety reserve protects you from debts and helps you achieve financial peace. Who doesn't want financial peace? Type in the chat, I desire, I desire, yeah? Because it is a biblical principle that I am going to inform you all about in a special class that will take place on the night of next Tuesday a particularly unique and exceptional class that provides valuable insights and knowledge on. I am going to provide you with a list of all the most significant biblical principles regarding biblical finances. It is going to be an unmissable and highly anticipated class on the night of next Tuesday. What I want to tell you here is that you need to have wisdom in where to invest your money, both for a safety net and to fulfill your dreams and also for retirement. And I can guarantee you that for none of these objectives, gold is not a good option. No. Look now in your Bible. So we are here to provide you with the learning of finances in light of the Bible. Yes, yes, indeed. Absolutely. Without a doubt. So have a look at your Bible right now in Ecclesiastes 7.12, which clearly states that wisdom is superior to money. The advantage of wisdom is that it saves people's lives, you know? Look now in Proverbs 21, 20, which says, In the house of the wise there is stored food and oil, but the fool devours everything he can. That is truly powerful. Yeah, yeah, the fool consumes everything he can. That is truly powerful. And it is not me who is discussing this. It is the Bible. If you have faith in the Bible, that is what you should focus on. So you require to invest capital? but you also require financial education and wisdom to know where to invest that capital effectively. If you have faith in the Bible, it works in your country. So that is what you must fulfill and abide by. Let's move forward. Third bad investment. A consortium is a way of purchasing in which a group of people come together to buy a specific good. Yes, consortio is another bad investment most of the time, pay attention. Why? Because the most common ones are the ones for home, car, and motorcycle, but there are others too. When selling a consortium, banks or companies emphasize the no interest payment advantage, a great selling point for them. However, the big issue with consortiums is the administration fee, which sometimes is higher than the interest rate. This charge will be incurred by the bank or company responsible for managing the consortium and will be paid by all the consortiums based on their respective shares, proportionate to the total amount of the letter of credit transaction. So also one more thing, some consortia may also include a reserve fund in their contract in addition to the insurance that makes the monthly bill quite expensive. From that point, you can inquire, but doctor, is a consortium considered an investment or not? No, it is not an investment because there is no income generated in this type of operation. You got to put this into consideration. What's your goal? What's your objective? When you pay a portion of your consortium, that money is used to form the amount that will be drawn to one of the members of the consortium. Only in numerous instances is it completely consumed by the group leaving no trace of its existence. Furthermore, you'll keep paying a company to do something you can do yourself. In other words, save your money if that's your goal and you want to avoid unnecessary costs. Therefore, when you make the payment for the administration fee in advance, 
It is important to note, this doesn't get deducted from the account. Pay attention to this. Practically all payments are made in advance if you want to settle it. So you are going to have that bill for an extended period of time. You will be making a purchase now, but in many cases you will only have it in the future as it is simply a matter of luck or doing something that is not guaranteed. This means that you will have the bill for many, many years with no certainty of immediate possession. Be a skilled money manager and take charge of your investments to successfully achieve your dreams and aspirations. To have your finances under control, you need to acquire the right knowledge. You know what I'm saying? And a lesson for the mentees, right? You are my mentee, right? Therefore, it is crucial to remember this important lesson. Invest in what you have knowledge of and can confidently articulate. Isn't that right? Yes, it's a crucial advice I have for you today, and it's in the Bible, Proverbs 19.2. Team, put it in the chat now, Proverbs 19.2. It's not good to act without thinking. And the individual who hastens with their feet was the designated root. Please take a look at it. Once again, the Bible teaches us that those who lack patience often engage in foolish behavior when it comes to their finances. So you must have patience in our class as well. Whoever lacks patience engages in foolish actions. Where are we super committed, super committed? Right in the chat. Hashtag super committed, super committed. You must have patience in your financial life. And if you do not have knowledge about investments, there is no way to invest. Begin acquiring more knowledge. Recall the lesson from yesterday regarding the two categories of seeds, namely the natural and the spiritual. Isn't that correct? Do you need to understand the importance of each one of them in your life? Do you realize how important this financial metanoia is? All of the mindset change that I am bringing to you today, it is crucial that you change your mindset today. And that's the reason why I'm doing this series of classes. That's why the intensive has a day for thinking and a day for finalizing, because I want you to have this entire mindset change. Look, after this, you're going to miss me. Yeah, each and every class plants a seed within you, laying the foundation for your transformational journey. Do you know how? By providing you with all that content and by giving you a phrase and a keyword so that you can obtain your participation certificate for free. Here we are getting ready for the hands-on content, which will come in the second stage, which is Christian week. I'm in control of my finances. Yeah? So let's move forward. Fourth, an illegal practice that is the one that really screws over those at the bottom of the pyramid, promising high returns, but leaving them with no resources. What is that? Those are the pyramids. There is no point of reference or standard of comparison in the business. No, the profits are contingent upon other individuals joining the business in order to be realized. Pay attention to this. It is the money that comes from the new members that keeps the business going. However, when there are no new members joining, the cycle comes to an end. And it is at this point that the pyramid starts to crumble really bad. And this is not good for the Christian. Look, it's in the Bible in Ecclesiastes eleven six. Sow your seed in the morning and do not cease your labor until nightfall, for the outcome of your efforts is uncertain, whether it be in this place or that, or if both shall yield equally favorable and fruitful results in their own unique ways. Look, individuals who enter the pyramids have a desire for substantial and swift profits but the probabilities of things going wrong or not as planned are quite apparent. Aren't you constructing something beneficial in the long term, such as the contributions of new clients? Does the pyramid provide rewards for the old storytellers? And according to the investigations, do you commit fraud with the new ones, promising high and guaranteed returns? The monthly growth rate ranges from approximately 10% to 15% per month but the risk associated with it is not very strong or substantial. First group works to grow base, attract new members in a way that turns investment into something unsustainable, making it unsustainable. So your investments are based on what's in the Bible. If you believe in the Bible, if the Bible works for you, pay attention to what I'm talking about here, okay? 
Deuteronomy 22.9. Team, put in the chat, Deuteronomy 22.9. You shall not plant your vineyard with different types of seeds, or else the fruit of the seeds you plant and the novelty of the vineyard will be wasted and not fully realized. The seed must be chosen with great care by us and yes, mix the bad soils with the good and safe soils in order to ensure optimal growth and a healthy environment for the plants. Pay attention to this. Look, any investment that promises high profits is a trap. Be cautious of investments with exaggerated profit claims. And it's highly likely to be a pyramid. Pay attention to this. Another bad investment that I would like to tell you about, but every time I mention it, I receive a lot of criticism to the point that I'm afraid to mention it here. Do you want me to inform you at this location? Yes or no? I am present here and it is a class that, oh my God, I did not carry out this action. Look, all I'm requesting is for you not to get angry with me, okay? Because in truth, it pertains to the dream of many individuals, right? However, I am here to instruct you, enabling you to allocate greater focus to these banking products. Come on, let us proceed further. So I will inform you straight up that you should be interested and give your full attention to this, okay? Five and six is the financing for your house or the financing for a car. Please pay attention to this. There exists a myth in numerous societies in general that an individual is only deemed successful when they are able to possess a property of their own. And then pay attention, a dwelling that you can claim as your very own, even if it has been financed through a loan or mortgage. However, the problem lies in the fact that financing does not actually make the good belong to you. In reality, this item is only going to become yours once you have finished paying off the bank in full. Prior to complete payment, the ownership of the item remains with the bank. Yes, yes, that is the case. So obviously there are exceptions. Yes, it can definitely be a beneficial financial deal that is worth considering. However, that is the exception, not the norm within the framework of the financial system. I am here to provide you with some attention regarding this matter. If the property is financed through a government subsidy or with a significantly low interest rate, you have the option to rent out a portion of it. That improves a lot and it can even be worth it depending on the case. However, owning a house can have its advantages, but it definitely cannot be called an investment in the traditional sense. It is not actually an investment, you know. It is the realization of a dream, is it not? It's good, yeah. God desires you to have dreams and brings your dreams into reality, but it's not a financial investment. I am not saying you cannot program yourself to purchase a house. I just do not want you to deceive yourself by thinking that the house you reside in is a financial investment. All right? And when it's financed, it's definitely not an investment because it doesn't generate any return for you. On the contrary, it extracts money from your pocket. Do you recollect in one of the previous classes when I had a conversation with you? Anything that takes money out of your pocket is not an investment. But Dr. Real Estate appreciates. If I pay today, can I sell for a higher price tomorrow? Let's see. Let's go with an example. Buying a property thinking that it will appreciate is like relying on luck because eventually it may appreciate, yes, and you can take advantage of the sale. In some cases, yes. However, it's also possible that no one will pay you what you asked and you'll end up losing money. Yes, you're counting on luck. The money tree is an asset that generates income without the need for a job or a 100% dedicated work. That is, the money tree generates passive income for you. Would it be different if you had a house and rented it to someone instead of living in it yourself? But Doc, so you purchase a finance dwelling and lease it to an individual and then I possess an asset? It depends on whether the rent you receive is enough to cover the installment or at least higher than the interest. If it is, then yes, it can be considered a good deal. But what happens in practice is that rents hardly manage to meet the value of real estate financing interests. Pay attention to this. Do you remember the class we had about assets? Money trees are nothing more than assets that put money in your pocket. So whenever you're going to invest in something, you have to think in this manner. 
This investment will either result in an increase of funds in my pocket within the upcoming months or a decrease of funds. Take this lesson, okay? I wasn't going to discuss that here, but as I was saying, using the house on fire example, I need you to comprehend this. Every time you are going to invest in something, ask yourself, pay attention to this content in this class. Where are the super committed ones? The super committed ones are making it to the end of our class today. A key question here, it's a very important piece of advice for you, a question like that. Will this put more money in my pocket in the upcoming months? Yes or no? If the answer is affirmative, this could be a favorable investment, you know? Let's go back to the financed house you bought. I used to pay $500 for rent, and now I've purchased a house with a financing quota of $1,000. From there, I ask you, will you have more money in the coming months? Yes or no? No, you're going to have less money. You're going to tell me like that, but the truth is that I'm going to have more expenses too, but the house is going to be mine. This is a trap. This is the lie. It's from the bank, the house. And within this $1,000 fee that you will pay, there will also be fees and interest that amount to half the value of the fee. Look, oh my God, I'm tired of seeing my mentees saying that they've paid four or five years of financing and the hold or balance never decreases. Pay attention. Is this happening because you're paying the majority, the biggest part in interest? But I do not want to delve any further into this topic so you do not get mad at me, okay? I only want to open your eyes. However, I wish to inform you that there are methods and strategies for you to purchase and repair your house in the correct manner. And I know that you want to make God's dreams come true in your life, but you still have to have your finances under control for that. You must have finances in control, make extra cash, and start investing to fulfill God's dreams in your life. Yeah? And do you realize the importance of financial wisdom? Do you think you could pay off your home so fast without investing in financial education? Yes or no? That's why it's crucial for you to invest more and more in your financial education. In the world of finance, there are things you don't even know you don't know. And you only discover it if you dedicate yourself, if it's a priority in your life, if it's God's answer to your prayers for you. You must have good mentors, invest in financial education. The more knowledge you have on how to make money, the more money you will be able to make. You have the ability to make any dream come true. You just need to have the know-how to follow the right steps to make them happen. And I am aware of this. That is the reason why I invest more than $40,000 per year in mentorships. I go on trips to acquire knowledge, to uncover things that were previously unknown to me, and I can confidently say that it is an experience that I am certain to return to in the future. Everything that is planted in fertile soil with the necessary care in planting is harvested multiplied. If you comprehended it, the principle of sowing that I elucidated to you yesterday, emphasizing its significance and potential impact on your life. All you have to do with the money seeds that God places in your hands is to begin planting money trees in fertile lands and watch them grow. Yes or no? Visualize planting a money seed and witnessing its transformation into a magnificent money tree that tirelessly generates an abundance of multiplied seeds for you to joyfully harvest and enjoy the fruits of your labor. Is this Christian? Yeah, yeah. Where are the super committed people who want to change their finances? Yeah, yes. So type in the chat, I desire that, I desire. Now envision yourself planting a group of trees and those trees producing a significantly greater amount of monetary seeds. If these trees are properly maintained, there will come a point in time when you will no longer require to plant them. You won't need to work anymore. And even so, you'll have your rewards. You'll have something to eat. That is to say, you'll have enough money to live without the need to exchange your time for work. Yes, at that moment, you will indeed have free time to dedicate to your life, do things you enjoy, and also to serve God with more time. That way you can fully dedicate yourself to your calling. And how's it going? Planting, harvesting, and multiplying. What I refer to as financial wisdom. 
right? Who desires to possess financial wisdom? Send me a message in the chat. I do. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Look, bringing this to your financial life, the more financial wisdom we have, the easier it will be to multiply the money that God puts in our hands. So if you've now changed your mindset with everything I told you today, make an Instagram story with the phrase from today's class and also mention that I'll give you the keyword today. But today, now you have the chance to ask me a question. Ah, you have talked to us about the worst investments, even what is not investments, right? All right. Yeah, yeah. So where precisely should I invest? You can inquire with me. And that, look, I am going to provide you with the information in today's class, in the later class, in class 10, during our session. In it, I'm going to tell you where you should put your money in a long-term mindset. You know what I mean? Remember that the optimal seed you can plant, the most advantageous investment you can make is in financial education, so you can become the foremost farmer of your money trees. From your money trees, my apologies, is that right? And it is God's desire for you to be an investor. We are explicitly instructed to multiply the talents that God bestows upon us, both in material possessions and in spiritual gifts. God wants this for your life. To multiply our money, a good financial education is crucial. We can multiply it through investments that will require us a lot of financial wisdom. And that's one of the things that I teach and stay close with my mentees. In addition to topics like getting out of debt, having your finances under control, making money on the side, we work on more in-depth investment strategies for various countries. Depending on the phrase of the day that I invite you to share on your Instagram account, if you have one, it is crucial to remember that there is no good investment without knowledge and proper understanding of the market. There is no good investment without knowledge. And you know, a lot of individuals inquire with me about the amount they should set aside for investment purposes. And I will demonstrate this in practice during one of the practical sessions of the second stage of the Christian week, I control my finances, which is set to be the largest online finance event for Christians worldwide. Yes, there are numerous countries invited. This is a closed and free event exclusively for registered attendees who will be attending on the upcoming Thursday. Here in the classes, I'm going to change my mindset and there at the event, in the Christian week, I control my finances. We're going to put our hands to work and practice. For your free participation certificate in the WhatsApp group, the keyword of the day is knowledge. Don't miss out. Get it now. Knowledge is one of the most crucial elements you must possess in order to respond to the inquiry for the upcoming class, which is where should I allocate my funds? So in case you're interested in knowing where to invest, I'll catch up with you later during our class 10 session. Looking forward to seeing you there. And what are you going to do now? He's going to do the stories on Instagram, okay? That we will share all the stories you make too, to indicate the event to many more people to be blessed with biblical wisdom in financial life. If you are not yet in the WhatsApp group to receive your free certificate of participation in the Biblical Finance Intensive, you must join a group. Thank you so much. See you later and take care of yourself. Goodbye. May God bless you abundantly and keep you safe always. Two huge doubts in the banks that wouldn't let me sleep. I couldn't find a way out of it. I spent my time in depression and crying. I was really drowning in debt. I was a person who owed almost $200,000. I had a ton of debts for like 20 years. I was feeling down in the dumps. I started to let go to leave behind the fears, to leave behind the doubts. I managed to free myself from everything, from that heavy and painful burden. I felt calm and confident speaking to the Department of Criteria and presenting them with my payment proposal. I've already paid off all the debts and I almost have this house completely bought. I have enough money now because previously I didn't have enough. I had six investments. Imagine getting rid of a $200,000 debt and on top of that, having something to invest now. It's awesome, thanks a lot. It's a total blessing. And I mean like a really big one, like huge. I'm happy because I'm free.